Hey, this is Michael Romeo from Symphony X, and I just want to say hi to the fans of The Architect. something to do with um, you've been touring more, you've been playing more live, so your songs are shaped more towards the live I, I mean, I don't think they're really shaped, but I think maybe at some level um, you think about that a little bit, you know? Like you want people to jump or something? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think a little bit of that comes into play, you know? I mean, writing, it's like, I just try to write something that just, you know, it feels right to me, it sounds cool. But yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of that. It's like, oh, this part, you know, maybe we should do this a little longer, because live, it would be cool. Or there's even things that we do that, uh, if we're recording, it's like, well, let's do this big thing. It's like, well, maybe let's not do it on the record, and live, we can extend it, or, you know, so there's some of that stuff, too. Okay. You know? But I think, yeah, I mean, last couple of records, there is a little bit, bit of that, um, it's in the back of your mind a little bit, you know, that how, how it would be presented live, how the song would come across live. Uh, do you think you uh, departed from the whole concept thing you used to make, like, in the, I don't know, five albums? Not really. I, I think, um, I mean, the last two records, and even the Odyssey, they're not really concept records, but there's always, like, the Odyssey, there is, you know, the big epic track, yeah, like of course. Divine Right, right, and um, you know, Paradise Lost. I mean, it is like an underlying theme throughout the album. You know, it's not really a concept story, or but there is this thing, and and the same thing with the new record. I mean, it's not like a concept story, but it has a lot to do with like technology and and this kind of thing. So it's all kind of interweaved. It is all kind of related like for the album. Theme. Yeah, yeah, it, it's always. I think when we write, that's that's um, it's just easier. I think to write when you have an idea of what you want it to sound like, you know, what the general, um, you know, what the general vibe is of the record, you know, and like with this last with Iconoclast, it was more, you know, uh, you know, a little heavier riffs, a little more abrasive. It was this machine kind of thing. So, you know, once that's in your mind to write, you just kind of follow through with that you know so I think when we come up with an idea maybe we don't have all the lyrics or we don't have all the song titles or anything but at least we kind of know um, the general idea of the record or the sound and it helps too you know with the writing it's like okay we're gonna do this Paradise Lost thing we do this Milton thing and it's gonna be you know heaven and hell and good and evil and dark and so then you know coming up with riffs and ideas it's like you know you kind of got your mind set that way and it's you know, shit happens. I remember that you used to put out an album like every year at the beginning. <laughs> like the first four albums or five albums you had to make one a year. And now you take two, even four years to, to, to make an album. So, uh, how does that affect the end result? I mean, I think in the early records, we didn't really tour. We weren't really touring. So that's all we did. We wrote, recorded it, put it out. You know, yeah, we had Japanese. Yeah, we didn't really have uh, any touring going on, you know. And uh, then once we started touring more, it would, yeah, it definitely would take a little more time. Because, like, whatever record it was, we did try to, you know, I tried to write on the bus or in a hotel room or some shit. And it's just, you can't, for me anyway, I mean, I like to just be in, in that environment, you know, like when, when I'm home. You know, I get up, I get my coffee. I go down to the studio and I fucking work all day till I fall asleep, you know. And then, but you're in, you know, you're in that mode, you know. You're you're, you're, you're in that mindset. So yeah, I mean, I think the more touring we do, it definitely adds some time to the records. And and I think it's 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 getting a little not not harder, maybe a little more difficult to um, maybe not even difficult is the right word, but trying to find something that. You know, is 
is good sounds like us but something a little different too you know each album trying to make it a little different not doing the same shit over and over you know so there's some of that too i mean trying to put a lot into the record you know like really i mean we really care you know we really care about the stuff you know have you ever thought about doing something radically different like i don't know putting like how, grunts how, into the songs or what is it grunting or uh, you know like guttural vocals like i don't know death metal vocals or whatever or a female vocal, or nah, nah, man. I mean, having guests in the album, I don't know, nah. something different. We do our thing, yeah, we do our thing and that's it. Okay. You know, I mean, if it was like a solo album or something separate, whatever, but nah, I mean, the band is like the band and that's what we do, and that's what we do. And uh, for you as a musician, um, where else do you make music? I mean, it's mostly the band. You know, it's mostly the band it takes a lot of time doing all the records. But I mean, there's other. I mean, there's other stuff. I know a couple of guys that, you know, are doing some independent films and trying to get into that a little bit, scoring and stuff. And you know, a lot of friends in town recording their bands and kind of helping them out. So doing guest solos on someone's record. You know, just little things here and there. Um, how has the the fact of having a bigger label and a bigger label and a bigger label? changed um, the way you can see the music like I, I guess you have a bigger budget now yeah but I mean usually the budget really doesn't affect us that much because I mean my, I have my own studio so but the have time you ever thought of uh, recording a real orchestra for instance yeah I mean with some talk of that maybe but I love doing that myself like programming yeah um, what, what software do you program do I have to tell you no, I mean, I have a lot of stuff. I, I Mostly for the big orchestral stuff, I'll, I'm using this Vienna Symphonic. Yeah. So. Like, now they have this thing that's fucking insane that it's um, all, you know, all the instruments and all the articulations and all that that you can load in their own player. And they have this uh, virtual kind of a stage, sound stage, or whatever venue with these... Uh, you know, multi-impulse in, responses for the reverb. So now it's like, yeah, they have their own player and their own placement in the room with the with the natural reverb. So, man, to me, and I just, you know, I love programming too. I love it. So it's like, I, I just rather do that. You know, with the right programming and just the understanding of the reverb and the placement. Sure, sure. Okay, what do you mean? I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty incredible what you can do. And uh, with this thing you're saying about the technology getting more real and more real, uh, how has it cha changed the way you, you work with the orchestral thing? Not really any different. Like from, I don't know, five albums where you still... I mean, you were still playing with keyboards then and then... Yeah, that was all like yeah, keyboard stuff. I mean, it was still like the same principle, you know, but now it's like, yeah, you can make it a little more, you know, realistic now. You know, and it's like, and it's just a part. I mean, it's still about... I mean, usually any kind of orchestral stuff, it's it's under the band, or it's adding to the band. It's usually not its own big thing. You know, a little bit, maybe, but, you know, it's... The it's, intro. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that, you know. It's, it's really all it's got to be. Or just to enhance what the band's doing. I mean, I studied that for so long, you know, just... Like, uh, score writing? Orchestration, yeah, everything. I mean, hours just studying the right of spring, you know, or whatever, freaking Star Wars, I mean. I got all the scores for all that stuff, so and a lot of time just to understand all that. So I think if you understand it and you're pretty good with computer stuff and all that, you can, something amazing what you can do. You know, it takes time, like anything. But yeah. What, um, what, like, uh, film scores do you like? Oh man, I mean, I love everything, dude. I love everything. Um, <laughs> You know, like my, my idol is John Williams, but by far he's a genius. I mean, yeah. it's a funny story too. I mean, we, I was on tour, um, whatever, when I turned 40 for my birthday. Uh, I came home from tour and it was like my birthday had just passed. And uh, I didn't notice my wife sent John Williams a letter and some of my stuff or whatever and said oh my husband's a big fan 
And I come home and then there's a big envelope from Boston Pops in my mailbox. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I open it up, it's a birthday card, you know. And then an autographed picture from, you know, Happy 40th, Mike, John Williams. And I was like, holy, how the fuck this come from? So yeah, he's like my... He's like Best my, birthday present ever. Yeah, dude, he's my guy, man, yeah. Okay. That was, that was very cool. Man. And uh, with these new guys that are starting to come from a computer-generated environment, I don't know, like the guy that did 300, I don't know. If awesome. You um, like Tyler Bates? Tyler Bates. Yeah. And, uh, Fantastic, man. I, I love all that, too. I mean, that was like some of the approach that for Iconoclast. For that, we went, because there is a little bit of orche orchestral stuff, but not what we normally would do. But there is a little bit of that dirty percussion and some of this synthy. There's a little bit of that in there, too. And it's like, yeah, the 300 soundtrack and stuff like that. That's like badass. Yeah, dude, that's badass. Cool. Bro. Yeah. And from those new guys, do you, is there like anyone that you say, ooh, that guy is pretty cool? Yeah, I mean, Tyler Bates is awesome. Yeah, all his shit's awesome. And I like all that stuff, but I mean, I think I'm more of a purist guy. You know, I, I always go back and listen to, like, you know, um, even like with like real classical stuff, like, like Stravinsky oh. or, or Rimsky Korsakov, more, um, you know, a little more modern but big, you know, like you know, like J what John Williams is doing, like with all the Star Wars and all. I mean, and that stuff's just I love it. You know? Now that you have, how many albums do you have? Like eight? Yeah, eight albums. I had to think about that. <laughs> yeah, eight. What's your favorite? Like, not your favorite album, but like the favorite time when you put on an album. Like you said, ooh, this, this, we, we really did a great job here. I think the last two. I think maybe Divine, our third record, Divine Wings Divine album. Wings. Okay, that, that. Because there was something kind of about it. Even when we were recording it, there was something about it. That, like, we would, um, like, listen back to the track and be like, that's kind of cool and... It's a little different. I never heard anything, you know. Yeah, that that definitely um, something about it. I think that we all knew it was like, wow, this is cool, and this is this is our sound now. You know, this is what we do. And a Paradise Lost too, the same thing. I think Paradise Lost it was more just getting back into the. You know, I remember when I was young and I got the new, you know, Judas Priest CD or whatever, and you put it on. It's like, fuck yeah, you know. Painkiller, a perfect example, you know, what a fucking great fucking album. And like that started coming into play too. Let's go back for the riffs and the, you know, the heavy stuff. So, Paradise Lost, yeah, I mean, I thought we felt really strong about that too. Because, yeah, I mean, there was some, you know, going for the bigger choruses and um, it was still had progressive elements. I mean, we still did our thing, but there was a little even blend of like the metal riffs and you know, the melody and, and the big arrangements. It had a little bit of everything. So that one was like another, okay, this is where we are now. Everything that we've done, and even trying to add some of this, like, you know, saying the Tyler Bates, some of the, um, the the film kind of stuff, it's really subtle. It's really subtle, the stuff that's in there, but it's in there. And there's definitely layers of stuff happening. And, um, yeah, I mean, just a lot of fun though, to write that stuff and to do it. You know, be like, wow, this is cool, this is different, this is us, but it's like, you know, it has this other element to it. So it's not the same old shit. Okay. When did you start making a living out of the band? Well, that's hard to say. I mean, from the beginning, from the first couple albums, we didn't really tour a lot, we didn't really have a lot of money coming in. We, we did okay, like in Japan, we did really well. So we had a little bit... But, I mean, like, I would teach, you know, yeah, I remember guys... remember you and Pinella had, like, you, you, you taught, like, a local shop, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, different ones. He was at a different one. But, like, because I used to teach when... God, man, when I was, like, freaking 17 or something, I used to teach at this place. But, um, yeah, I mean, I did that. I was doing some lessons and um, recording bands. Or, you so know, I always... It was something with music, I, you know what I mean? I always was able to get by. You know, one way or the other. Did you study like audio engineering or something you learned from the way? Nah, I'm, ever since, you know, I, 
when I was young, I just was, you know, I just kind of enjoyed that kind of thing. And, you know, I mean, I always loved playing, obviously, but then, like, to be able to kind of record yourself and listen back and, you know. I remember listening to Star Wars track you made, like, dubbing and dubbing uh, and dubbing yeah. and dubbing pretty cool stuff. And I guess you did that, like, uh, when you were, like, 19 or something. That was a while back because it was like, I think, yeah, I didn't even have a computer. I think that was like on a D88 or ADAT, I think, whatever. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't even have any, yeah, that was wow, a long time ago. But yeah, I mean, it's cool because, you know, you get to be creative, man. And, you know, now it's like we're saying with all this technology, you know, you can mock up this whole score and you get guitars in there and, you know, so much shit you can do. So I was always about that. I always, always, man, had like some kind of little studio or place to work, you know. I mean, I had four track when I first started. Then I bought an eight track reel to reel, you know, and then I got the D88s and eventually the whole computer software thing. And you know, I was, I was always interested in, in that. I was always a knob turner dude, you know. I was always into tweaking shit. Are you like into Pro Tools and standard? I use Cubase. It's my <laughs> yeah, it's my thing. I mean, I just... It's way better for programming, isn't it? Yeah, man, it's just more... I think creatively, as a musician, for me anyway, it's... You know, because I tried, you know, when I was in the market to buy something. I mean, I tried all of them that were out there. And they were all cool, but they all basically did the same thing. But Cubase, for me, I mean, I had actually Nuendo was what I started. You know, I just, you know, it just... Um, had all the, like, the MIDI capabilities and all the virtual instruments and all that kind of stuff. And... They all basically do the same thing. Are you, you know a Mac I mean? guy or a PC guy? PC guy. <laughs> and again, man, I mean, because I always argue with fucking people. You know, I, like, you know, because a lot of the guys I know that have studios down, I mean, you know, some have Mac, you know, a lot of them have the Mac Pro Tools thing, and we always get in these arguments. Yeah. It's but I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's like, works. it's, yeah, it's whatever works and whatever you're comfortable with, you know, it, it all does the same shit. You know, at the end of the day. So whatever you're comfortable with, whatever works for you, it's, it's all the same. Okay. Where do you see, like, the band could go from here on? Like, what what else do you want to do? With or what are these things you haven't been able to do yet? Nothing really. I mean, you know. Um. <laughs> any, any live DVD coming up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's something we talk about, too. You know, I mean, with us, it's like with anything, it would have to be, you know, something really special. And, you know, it's just the thing of, like, to do it to do it right for us, that we're, something that we're really happy with. You know, not just to do it to do it. You know, to do it and maybe have an orchestra and, and something like that. Something that's different, especially not just like, oh, yeah, you know, let's go play this fucking place and we'll film it and we'll go try to sell it. It's like, no, man, we're not about that. Let's, you know, it's just like the records. Let's just do something that's the best that we can do that's something special know something different okay. so yeah I mean it gets thrown around and we talk about it from time to time there's no real plans but yeah maybe last album you you finally got to make music videos how was that yeah I mean you know figured we tried and... but did, did you get into like designing any of it or you just wrote like this is a song and design something I mean I, they kind of knew I mean we did talk about like what the album is about and, and all this kind of stuff and And those two songs, and yeah, I mean, the, the company, they kind of, you know, they had their kind of script thing, and it was like, okay, this could be cool. We just kind of went with it, you know. Was it what you wanted, or? Yeah, I mean, I think for what that stuff was, you know, and we had never done one before. So, um, yeah, I was like, yeah, sure, let's, let's, let's try it, let's do it. It's like, do you have a visual concept of what your music is? Well, yeah, with Paradise, with that record and those songs, I mean, I think they pretty much, pretty much, that that thing came across. You know, that is a little bit, like, epic, and there is this heaven and hell thing, and uh, this snake, and there is, you know, these different symbolism and different things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, or if we ever did one for, like, say, the Odyssey, I mean, you know what that would be. You know, I mean, you could see it would be this, you know, it's not going to be, you know, Something totally, uh, you know, you know, what the hell could I even say? I don't know. Trent Reznor. A fucking <laughs> car uh, shootout or something. You know what I mean, it's, you yeah. know what it's going to be. So I mean, but that's the thing with the, with our music. I think um, it lends itself to some kind of visual. Okay. You know, and I think those people got it, 
And um, you were happy with it? Yeah, no, I think it's it's all good. <laughs> um, what are your what what is your favorite song? Oof, oh, Jesus. I remember once you said it was through the looking glass, but I, I guess that changed. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's so hard to say. Because some... Along along the way, some had a certain significance, too. You know, that, like, sticks in my mind. Like, like the new record, like, Iconoclast, the title track. That song was, like... That was, like, when we were looking for an idea with this record. We didn't, weren't really sure yet. And I was thinking, and I was listening to the 300 soundtrack in The Matrix, and I'm like be kind of cool to get some metal riffs and maybe put some of that shit in there and try something and then I sat down in like a day or whatever whatever wasn't that long and just the whole thing just came out beginning to end I mean it was rough demo you know program yeah, but it was pro it was actually the inspiration was there it was the pro <laughs> but the program and everything was like really close to the record and then I remember I sent the thing to Russ I'm like like yeah dude what this what do you think it is And then he calls me and he's like, he's like, dude, don't fucking change anything. Like, that's it. That's the way it is. So it's like, to me, like that song has a, a, a certain significance. You know, it, there's, that was the song that was like, it just came out of nowhere. And then that's what the album is going to be. Why don't you guys ever, ever, I mean, you did when you, you released the five of my favorite song, it's the Rediscovery Part Two. You never in the world played it like. I don't think we did. Why? This is just so much stuff too complex to play live or no 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 we never make it so we can't do it live ever i mean probably the hardest one is the odyssey because of the program yeah. programming playing with you yeah. but when we got it to where it's it, it works cool it's live actually yeah it's cool like i'll take some of the string parts yeah, and then it's cool. a cool live thing so that would be the hardest one but i mean it's like this record too there's so much material on this iconoclast double disc And there's some songs we probably won't play, but um, that's just, you know, because you, you do want to still play some of the old songs and some of the favorite fan favorites and, and songs that we like to play too. And then it's just too much stuff, you know, it's like, it, it gets hard too. I mean, it gets really hard, like the last couple years of the set list, when you have a new record and it's like you want to play a lot of the new record, but you can't obviously play the whole, everything. Because you want to do, you know, some other stuff. So yeah, I mean, there's some songs that are just, you know, they're cool and we like them, but you know, there's just they just never worked their way into with the set. Okay. I was wondering if you listen to like what what else do you listen to besides metal? I mean, I try to listen to like you know when band has a new record like Meshuggah, or somebody like that. You know, it's fucking great shit. Um, yeah, I man, it's just you go on first. So many cool bands. You know? I mean, usually it's like yeah, the more Main, no, not, I don't want to say mainstream, but you know the metal band, mainstream. Yeah, the popular bands. I mean, um, like Oak. Yeah, whatever, man. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes out to the album, I'll try to get to listen to. It. But it's hard to, because um, I'm a huge Rush fan, and I still haven't heard the last Rush record. Okay. You know, because like stuff starts to pile up in my studio. It's like, oh man, I got to listen to that. I got to listen to that. Such tours are for. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't bring anything with me. Do you think there's a point? When you grow up, will you just stop listening to new music and you just have your own influences and that's all you, what you can? And I was wondering if it's a, a thing of age, like when you got a certain age and you stop listening to any of it. I don't know if it's a certain age, but uh, I, 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 I agree with that a little bit because I, I mean, I'll listen to a lot of the new stuff that comes out just to kind of check it out, you know, it's anything new and usually just cool shit like Tool or something cool, you know. But, um, But I think the influences for me, like the stuff I grew up with, I mean, I, I just think that's like, it's part of what you are, like musically, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, maybe you'll listen to something new and it'll be like, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe I'll you know, steal that or, you know, or borrow that. But, um, but normally, no. I mean, for me, it's like, and especially when I'm writing, I try not to listen to too much like metal stuff, you know? I'll try not to. It's not polluted. Yeah, I don't want to, like, kind of, you know, sometimes things get stuck in your head and, you know, you try to keep it as original as you can. But, yeah, I mean, that's, like, if I put something on, it normally would be, like, a Sabbath 
You know, if I just want to hang out around Classic. the house. Yeah, I man, I'll put on Heaven and Hell or, you know, or, you? or some priest. I mean, it's the stuff I grew up with, man. Rainbow. I was never a big rainbow guy, No, no, actually. no, not a Blackmore guy? Eh, not really. I never really, I don't know why. I was more of an Uli Roth guy. Okay. You know, old Scorps, man. That's, <laughs> that was my thing. But yeah, I mean, he, something about that stuff, you know, kind of made you what, you know. What you like. What you, yeah, what, what you kind of influenced you. So yeah, usually that stuff, it's comfortable. It's familiar, you know what I mean? Okay. Ozzy, Randy Rose, like, like, can listen to that forever. No. Okay. Well, that's... Anything else you want to say to the Mexican fans from... Yeah, just fans? thanks for tonight, for coming out. Thank you so much. It was great Awesome show, show man. It's definitely a great crowd. Uh, hey, this is Michael Romeo from Symphony X. I just want to say, how you doing, everybody, at Gothica Magazine.